Okay, Miro did some fabulous sculpture and that's the way we're gonna head now. So first, I'd like to take a little bit of a look at his work and see what we can relate to. So the students relate to his childlike faces and his quirky little images and the shapes. They're not perfect, they're a little bit organic. You'll see this boy's intensely looking at the face. The sculpture's about the same size. In this one, you've got the dreaming, spacey, moony man with the one eye floating in the night sky with the red moon and his weird legs coming out and these jowly things and the crazy hair. And the third one, we've got these giant three shapes and you've got the sharp teeth coming out and the sort of looks like a mouth open and it's friendly monster type, and this mousy guy in the side and it's um, very childlike and it's bold and it's, it's very easy to relate to. And then we're gonna head to our chart and you've got all these wonderful symbols and shapes that we've already made, but you've gotta try and think about them maybe in two ways. For example, this nose shape, nose, nostrils, but it also could be a girl's dress and her little legs. Same with this one, it looks like a head eyes and a nose, or is it a body, arms and a neck? Could this be a body? Obviously this is a face. Is this an eyeball or is it a stomach with a giant belly button? And you've got to look at these shapes and symbols and try to start to put them together to create something new. So for this next activity, this sculptural activity, we're going to use some magic clay. We're going to use poly half balls. We're going to use straws. These particular straws come in different sizes, which means they can slot into each other like that. You need a pair of scissors and you need a skewer to get you started. So this sculpture is about colour, form and shape. And that's what we're looking at. So first of all, we've got to make an armature armature, the skeleton of the sculpture. So to begin with, I'll take a skewer and just make a hole. I'm going to put a medium sort of size straw in. And if it's not deep enough, you just get the skewer. The skewer will help the students and that goes in like that. Now we want it nice and stable. We can also stabilise that with a bit of magic clay because the magic clay is an air drying paper which can be used to sculpt with but it also can be used as an adhesive or a glue. So to hold that in place, I might not use glue but that's just to hold it in place. Now if I wanted to, let's straighten that out, I can actually put the bigger straw on top which I do want to. I can also cut that down if I want to as well. Now I'm actually just going to add a little bit extra. I'm going to skewer my straw. This is just to show another sort of... And I'm going to skewer my straw. These poly halves come in all different sizes, so you don't just have to use one. I'm going to make that a bit shorter. and just push that in like that. Okay, already I'm feeling pretty happy. Okay, I, I am going to make a bendy part, but I've got that straw in there. I'll pick that out. Uh, I've got a challenge there. I'm gonna cut that straw down so I can get that straw out and bend that. Uh -huh. like that, push it back down. I'll push that back, I need that to go down a bit more. There we go. I love sculpture, I love construction. It is trial and error and I don't think that the kids always get enough of it. Okay, so for me, I have made a body, a tail, 
and a head shape. So I'm going to, ooh, I could make a leg, I've got a tail, I could actually make a leg and have another bit. I might just do another little bit coming out. Yes, I will. Okay, so I've got a tail. I'm not gonna do two legs because I don't really want it symmetrical. Miro's creatures aren't always symmetrical, they're whatever you want. So I'm just gonna pop another leg in. I've been trouble getting that in, so I'm gonna get the skewer and just give that a good old wiggle. There we go, ooh, I like that. So I've got a tail, a leg, a body, and a head. Now we know Miro loved his primary colours, so we've got our primary colours here, and he also loved green, that's his favourite secondary, I think. Now, to put this over the poly ball, you can just pancake it in your hand, and then it just, this magic clay is wonderful. It just gently, a, a little bit goes a long way, and gently flatten it out. If you wanted to, you could also mix this up with paint, but I'm just gonna use magic clay. And I'm gonna also use a bit of magic clay to hold things in place. So when I get to the joins, I'm gonna use a little bit extra. And then when I'm away from the joins, I'll flatten it out a bit. And if you haven't used magic clay before, when magic clay feels like, uh, it feels like marshmallows, but when it dries, it's actually as hard as dry paper mache. It's exactly like paper mache. But it's also, because it feels like marshmallows and it's really soft, it, it's a really sensory piece of equipment. And, you know, I think this has been said before, the sensory part for the students is something that they're lacking and something that is really beneficial. And it really does make them happy. They, they love this stuff. Okay, so I didn't use too much. I use this in class and it goes always a lot further than I think. I actually usually order more than I need. Okay, now I can spend some time flattening that out and making it perfect, but I'm not going to. Okay, so I'm going to go to yellow. I could cover the straw if I want, but I'm not going to. You can cover parts of it. So, and now what I'm doing is I'm rolling a coil or a sausage. So you're starting to get the, the 3D language will start to appear naturally. Rolling, pinching, pulling. So we've made the sculpture. Um, I was, I used heaps of magic clay because I'm doing a demonstration. But um, as you can see, I actually haven't used that much. It, it does go a long way. But you've got all your sculptural experience. You've got your sculptural language. You've got your sensory language, your sensory feelings. Um, and you've got this amazing 3D sculpture using all those symbols and shapes it's really influenced the way I've worked I've also used a bit of black because I know Mira Miro loved the black lines so I've put that black line into the work and I've got things coming out and it's exciting I'm just putting the lids on the magic clay because magic clay is air drying and I don't want my magic clay to dry out and now I'm going to have a little talk to you about display. So I've got three sculptures here. These two are dry. 
So you can see they're quite solid and hard, like paper mache. This one's wet, so I can't really touch it. Now you can display this on a flat surface or a brightly covered, coloured sheet underneath and that will look fabulous. But the wonderful thing that, that I love about the polyfoam is that these push pins, which I also love, go through it and you can make a 3D display come out of the wall. So I'm going to attach one of these sculptures to the wall and then you can use your imagination for your school to have a Miro display with all these 3D sculptures coming out and it's going to look absolutely fabulous. It will be the wow, the showstopper of the school.